Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. In part one of this tutorial, we looked at a method for recreating the light writing effect seen in the Sprint commercials. But in the real version, they actually use the motion of flashlights, which creates imperfections in the glow, which we didn't have in our version. Also, I'd love it if the start point for each stroke had an intense point of light too. So in this tutorial, I'm going to try and make that happen. So here I am in After Effects in my logo pre-comp. First off, let's focus on the hotspots for the stroke's start point. Select the top two logo layers, so that's the logo and logo glow layers, and duplicate them by hitting Ctrl D or Command D if you're on a Mac. Then move them to the top of the logo layers, and then let's rename them. I'll select this top one and I'll hit Enter to rename this to Glare A. And then I'll do the same for the second one down but I'll call it Glare B. Okay, once that's done, I'll solo these two layers by going into the timeline and activating their solo switch. This will make all layers that are not soloed temporarily invisible. Next, I'll select Glare A and hit E to reveal all effects. And then I'll twirl down the stroke effect so that I can find my start and end property. And then once I see them, I'll twirl down the end property so that I can see its expression. Now normally, if I want to see a layer's expressions, all I have to do is hit EE. But in this case, I want to see both the start and end property and the end property's expression. So I had to do it this way. Next, go into the expression and cut it out by selecting the text and hitting Control X or Command X on a Macintosh. Then, Alt click or Option click on the Start Properties Stopwatch button to add an expression and paste the expression in by hitting Control V or Command V if you're on a Macintosh. So now the expression that was on the end property is on the start property, which means that our expression controller found on our controller null is controlling the value for start on this layer, not the value for end. But I still want to animate the end too. So I'll alt click on the end property stopwatch to add an expression and then I'll use the expression pick whip to grab hold of the start property and then I'll add a plus two to the current expression and then I'll hit enter to confirm it. This creates an expression that takes whatever the value for the start property is and adds two. So if the start property is at 50% then the end property will be at 52%. The end result is that no matter where the start property is located, we will always see 2% of the stroke until the start property reaches 99%. And 99% will of course only see 1% of the stroke because there's only 1% left. And at 100%, where the start point is at the very end of the stroke line, we'll see nothing. Next, let's select both the start and end property, and then from the menu, choose Edit, Copy, and then select Glare B and hit E to show all effects. Then select the stroke effect and choose Edit Paste, which will add the expressions directly to the effect. Be careful here. If you select just the layer and try to paste it in, After Effects may duplicate the entire stroke effect, which you don't want. Then you'll have two stroke effects on the same layer. Next, select Glare A and in the Effects panel, set its stroke size to 6. Then select Glare B and in the Effects panel set its stroke size to 10. Then duplicate Glare B by selecting it in the timeline and hitting Control D and then move the duplicate down in the stack order below Glare B. Then rename it to Glare C. Then with Glare C selected in the Effects panel set the stroke color to a pale green. Then, further down in the Effects panel, set the Fast Blur effect's blurriness up to 15. If we do a quick RAM preview, we can see that we've created some small hotspots that will be at the head of each stroke. And if we unsolo each layer and we do another RAM preview, we can see it all working together. Okay, so far so good. Now let's add in some tiny little imperfections. Duplicate the three glare layers and then once that's done, move them to the top of all of the logo and glare layers. Then let's rename each of these. So I'll rename glare A to random A 
and then I'll rename glare B to random B. And then finally, I'll rename glare C to random C. Then I'll turn on our random layer solo switch so that we can see only them. Okay, this next part may seem a little complicated, but it's really not that big a deal. But do yourself a favor and pay close attention here. In the timeline, select random A and hit EE to reveal the layer's expressions. Get into the expression for the start value and replace the current expression with the following. Wiggle, open parentheses, 5, comma, 50, close parentheses. Then set the start property to have a value of 50. By doing this, we're keeping a baseline of 50 for the value with the ability for it to wiggle up to 50% in either direction. This will create random points of light because the end point will always be 2% higher than the start point. So you get random blips of light that are 2% of the stroke. Now kids, do not attempt this next part at home. I'm going to quickly copy the start property for random A and then I'll paste it into the stroke effect start property for random B and random C. I'll flash forward in time to where I've done this and as you can see this is not looking right. The three layers random spots are not lining up together and that's because they use the wiggle effect which creates random values. Since I want these layers to match I can't use the wiggle expression for random B and C. Instead I need to link their start property to the start property for random A. So in random B's start property I'll get into the expression and then I'll use the expression pick whip to replace the current expression by dragging it to random A's start property. No matter what the value for random A's start property, random B start property will have the same value. I'll do the same exact thing for random C using the pick whip to replace the current code. A quick RAM preview and it's looking good. We have random points of light jumping around. But if we unsolo the layers, we quickly become aware of a problem. These random points are appearing before the stroke has fully formed, which doesn't look right. They should not appear in places where the stroke doesn't exist yet. To fix that, in the timeline, select all three of the random layers, and then let's just move down to one and a half seconds in the timeline. That's the point at which the strokes are fully formed. And then using the left bracket key, set these layers in points to the current frame. Now, as you can see, if I do a RAM preview, the random points don't appear until after the stroke has been fully animated on. Okay, jumping back into my main composition, I can see that I have one more problem. Since my first frame of animation shows the 2% of the stroke created by the first frame of glare, I just need to move both of the logo pre-comps a little further down in time so that my first frame shows nothing. Wherever in time I want the logo to start showing up, that's where I'll set the in point. A quick RAM preview, and there you go, it's looking good. Just some final notes on some things that might help you in creating this effect. In addition to wiggling the position value for the controller null, you should consider also wiggling the rotation and scale slightly. This will certainly create more of a randomness to it. Also, and I'm not going to get into it here, but if you want more of that scribbly kind of look, you can try creating many copies of the logo composition, each with thin stroke lines and different wiggle values for the controller null. Might do you some good. Also, if you're good at drawing by hand and you have a Wacom or other tablet with a pressure sensitive stylus, you should look into using the After Effects paint tools or the vector paint effect for this sort of thing. While the vector paint effect is a lot harder to control than the paint effect with regard to the stroke shape, it can produce some nice variation and wiggling of the strokes with minimal effort. Finally, with third-party plugins like Trapcode 3D Stroke or Particular, you can probably get even better results. If you haven't checked out Creative Cow leader Andrew Kramer's tutorial on creating light streaks, you should. You may even be able to adapt that technique to this one. That's it for now. Hopefully, you'll be able to take this stuff and do something cool with it. I would love to see examples of your work, so please start posting. And of course, I've got to do some shameless self-promotion here. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to check out my Creative Cow Master Series DVDs, which you can find at training.creativecow.net. You can also find a lot of other great training DVDs there as well. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.